So, lost in the shuffle of the men, you know, releasing their roster, uh, me probably wondering if Ghana will call me to play a goal as goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> the women uh, started off their last window of the year with a 2-1 win in Brazil. There's, there's a lot of questions about this team going into a World Cup year next year. And I, and I think it's interesting just kind of seeing what's actually available for them. But if you look at the roster overall, I mean, let's see. For the game, if you look at it, was a game of two halves. The first half was very much more Canada taking it to Brazil. And the second half was Brazil, you know, countering, taking it back to Canada, but not as many results. And, and I think there are some interesting questions in terms of what we think might happen, especially with roster choices. But first, let's talk about the game. Uh, set pieces in the first half truly opened it up for Canada. We have Shalisa Dorsey scoring off of a header, off a set piece. Uh, corner brought out Lawrence. Fleming to Lawrence, Lawrence put into the box, Storsky with a looping header, puts it up 1-0, and then another set piece coming in the corner, we have Christine Sinclair hanging it out, and then on the half volley, Adrian Leon, if, if you can find someone who uh, isn't <laughs> playing better than her for Canada, I, I don't know who is, I truly do not know who is. So with that coming in, you have now it's just interesting to look at it, right? So, Bev started off with her 4 2 3 1 that she's been going through. A lot of questions about this, and I'm curious to see kind of what she does with this. But she had Bianca St. George's, Ashley Lawrence as your fullbacks, Zdorsky and Buchanan as your center backs with Kaylin Sheridan as your goalkeeper. Your two holdings again, Grosso and Fleming, with Sinclair as a 10, with wingers VN and Prince and then Evelyn Viennes. Evelyn Viennes as the nine and then Leon. I don't know why I keep on making that mistake. Yeah, Anyways, enough about my French rant. But the first half with this lineup proved to get up on the front foot and able to really move. And there's a lot of conversations in terms of what do we think could happen? What do we see as a possibility? I think it's interesting looking at this team and again a good performance in Brazil of notes of this game before we get into just talking about it. Um, you had Gabby Carl replacing BSG in the 46th minute, Heidema as well playing the second half, Desiree Scott replacing Sinclair in the 56th minute, Leon and Grosso coming off for Schmidt and Lacasse in the 62nd minute. And then Amanda Allen, U17, getting her first national team cap, replacing Nichelle Prince in the 71st minute. I guess we'll start with Prince with this question, which is, I think, and it's overall for this roster, I think for me, most of the spots are taken. There's only three spots, I believe, that are maybe available. And it's really, for me, it's two, but I'll entertain a third. First is, who is the second, who is going to be the second uh, winger? There's no Janine Becky in this window, so you're still running those two. But I think with Becky healthy, more than likely she's taking one of the winger spots, which means you have Prince and Leon battling for the additional winger position. And I mean, at this point, it's not very close. It is... Leon. Adrian Leon is that second winger right now. But I don't think it's based off anything that she doesn't do well. That is Prince. I think it's interesting when we look at two those two and we're comparing them. It's tough in that sense because you're looking at players who are really uh, developing and, and really producing on the pitch. And Prince's numbers don't may, maybe look as good off of them, but there's a lot that she does on the pitch that works. In this Brazil game, she set up Sinclair with two great opportunities that normally you'd see Sinclair put away, but Sinclair wasn't able to do so. But her movement up and down the wings are important. Both our wingers do defend well, so I think the winger spot is very much up and is, is very much settled at this point. Barring Prince 
really taking it up and it really comes down to if Leon starts getting minutes especially leading into next year man it's gonna be tough to unseat her second position I think there's a conversation about and it's the nines and I think between Heidema and Viennes both players can play and, and I was thinking about this I was wondering is it that Heidema maybe isn't suited for that up and down type of a game and that's not true because she wasn't that game versus Australia and in Australia she was able to provide that but I think what it is is that Evelyn Viennes gives more opportunity for that versatility up and down the forward lines whether she moves out wide whether she moves and stays as a nine or whether she tries to um, drop in as a CDM and then ultimately let Christine move forward. She does definitely offer more of that versatility and it has a little bit more foot space, a foot pace. And I think there's a ball that Schmidt sent into Heidemann in the second half that, man, it was just sitting for her there, but it was just right beyond her reach. And if, she's, if that's Vienna or another forward, they get to it. And that's nothing against Heidema. Heidema definitely offers things. Definitely should have earned a penalty in the second half. It wasn't given. But Heidema definitely offers different aspects than Vien. But Vien, I think, is the more complete player for what they are trying to do on the pitch for Canada. And that's the second spot that I think there's a battle. And I think it's starting to lean towards Evelyn Vien's. When it comes to the third position, and this is where... We had one half where you essentially had Canada on the front foot, and then the second half you had Brazil on the front foot. What do we do with the third midfielder, especially if you're going to be playing Sinclair as a 10? And it really ultimately comes down to, <laughs> it comes down to Grosso versus Quinn. And Quinn didn't play. I expect to see them in the lineup for Tuesday's matchup. But Quinn versus Grosso, these are the questions. Both players, Quinn and Fleming, aren't known as their defensives. And whenever they're both playing, you see Fleming drop in a little bit deeper. And then you have a player like Grosso taking more of the eight and Sinclair jumps in at the 10, which isn't a bad usage for both players. However, I, I do wonder what's the give and take there with with Quinn they offer a little bit more defensive stability defensive awareness are able to really keep teams a little bit better and more support for the center backs however is that worth the trade-off between the offensive production that say a Fleming and Grosso can give and it's great that we're able to see it against these teams especially tough teams. This is probably outside of the States and Spain this year. This is our top three game that we play in terms of competition. And it's been good to see the offensive production, but then also see the defensive potential issues that come with that. So I think what that does give us an opportunity to do is to say, that will be, I think, the last position to look at going into the new year. Um, I, I think for the most part also, I think this roster may be set, but we'll, we'll have that discussion a little bit further more once we get through this window. But guys, what do you guys think of the Brazil game? I mean, I, I've talked a lot about it, but there's a lot of good things that we saw offensively, but there's still questions. I think there are a few spots available on this roster, so it's going to be interesting to see how Beth balances out those battles, especially at the nine, the wingers, and then especially when you're looking at the midfield. I know some have brought up the idea of maybe Riviera as a fullback versus BSG, Chapman, or Carl. For me, I don't really see that as a competition because when they've all been available, they have always gone and set up with Riviera. They've always started off with Riviera, and then they've rotated either a Carl, and then rotated either a Chapman or a BSG. But Riviera has always been the first option. So I think it's her spot to lose. And I think depending on how she comes back will ultimately tell us, you know, how it goes. And that, that's also another solution if we look at what could happen. If we have Riviere or even Deanne Rose, and we'll talk about this in after the second game, but if Riviere doesn't come back healthy, 
you can certainly look at that and say well, the solution is you play Becky at that fullback and that allows both of your that allows both of your wingers to stay on the pitch and go from there. I'm curious to see what happens in a Tuesday's game, especially the runs from uh, Laracy as well as uh, a player such as, uh, I'm wondering what Quinn looks like, what Laracy looks like, and see what they are able to give to this picture. Because I think those two players, especially with Rose's, Deanne Rose's injury, Clarissa has an opportunity to really take a hold of the last winger position, but we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I think I've rambled enough, but guys, let me know. What do you think about the game? Let's talk about it.